Well, how do there, chums? Because I can to not to use. And today, chums, something a little bit different. I'm going to be talking about the three games over the next three months that I'm very interested in. So this month, in January, coming up this Friday, will be Power World on my channel, people. Now, if you haven't heard of Power World, Power World is like a creature collecting game, a bit like Pokemon, but it's got more elements of Arc Evolved, more than Pokemon in a roundabout way. Because you've got to build your own base, there's a lot of survival elements, and the actual boss fights are almost on par with or akin to those of Sword of Elden Ring. It's not an easy jaunt inside of this world. So yeah, I've been watching quite a lot of people play Power World in early access, and it does look pretty darn freaking awesome. So hopefully I've put an overlay right now, and you're seeing some video footage of other players playing this game. Now, I'm waiting for it to come to the Xbox Store. I'm going to actually purchase this game because I don't actually have Game Pass. So I've got a little bit of a wait. Also, I've got a bit of a deficit in the old bank fund, being that we've just come up tail end of Christmas. So, yeah, I will be having to do something about that before I can purchase a coat it before this Friday. Anyway, people, that's going to be coming to my channel. And I'm going to be playing that all the way through January and perhaps even halfway through February or late February. Because inside of February, I believe around the 22nd of February, Nightingale is being released. Well, chums, I jumped on in to get some Dragon's Dogma footage, and I've found some Nightingale footage. And it's by IGN! This realm has long been forgotten by the Fae. Left in limbo. Not unlike you. How fitting. And thus... Here is yours to put down roots, but beware. In short time, darkness will descend, and with it, Stygian perils. Laying foundations will keep you intrepid, child of Earth. I love the actual narration on this. This guy is freaking great. This guy is called Puck. He appears quite often inside of the tutorial. While you play Carpenter, there are nooks in these surrounding wilds I must scrub in preparation for that final gift I pledged. And then he dances off. There he goes! Wee! Freaking lovely. So as you can see, people, this looks majestically awesome, doesn't it? The world is very nicely realised. I love all the sort of lens flares as you're walking around. It is beautiful. So this is the forest type biome. Oh, it looks like they've upped the actual UI somewhat there. The UI looks a bit more intuitive. This is looking nice. Hopefully this is going to be more on kin to what I hope to see on launch in February. And there's lots of points of interest. There's always something that draws your attention on the horizon. And the water in this game is freaking beautiful. Everything in this game is beautiful. Even if you just want to stand around and take in the sights, all the birds tweeting, the nature, it's quite relaxing at times. It's not like that all the time, though, especially when you get attacked by wild boars and wolves and all sorts of other sorts of shenanigans. But yeah, oh, the UI looks a lot better on this. And it looks like you can pull the map straight up. That was one of the sort of suggestions that I made. And you can put down your little points of interest and... It looks like navigation has been made a bit better. Uh, everything is looking far more polished. I've noticed that all the game triggers are there as well, like LB, right trigger, L trigger down on the sidebar. So it looks like they've made this fully integrated with controller now, which during my time of playing this in early playtesting, you know, I didn't have that luxury. So brilliant. Okay, um, I'm super stoked for this one, people. Heck yes. So a little bit of additional footage that I'm going to have to try and slap into my video now as I'm doing the editing. But I think it's worth it. That gives you a little insight into what to expect jumping in within the first, like, what, 10, 20 minutes of playing Nightingale. Enjoy, people. Freaking awesome. Now, Nightingale itself also has the base building aspect and survival type elements akin to that of, you know, Ark Evolved or Ark Survival, whatever one you want to go with. But yes, that, that game has got me thoroughly interested, mainly because inside of Nightingale, one, you're in steampunk type garb, and, you know, 
I do like the old steampunk. Yeah, look, I've got an old steampunk hat right here. Yes, lovely, jubbly, magical, majestical, fantastically awesome. Yes. So, yeah, Nightingale is a game that also has procedural elements. So you go around the world and you find all these blueprints for some cards. Now these cards are like tarot cards, but you take them to a portal device, or you can build your own portal device in fact, and you lay them into the portal device, I think about three cards or so, and one is like a major, so that sort of denotes maybe the biome. There's forest, there's swamp, and there's desert realms that you can sort of conjure up. So there's three at the moment there that I can think of. And then there's sort of like companion type cards that you can put in there. So there's like one with beasts that makes it so there's more beast spawns. Or you can have one that makes it perpetual daylight. Or you can make it so more enemies spawn. Or you can just change the sky box of other cards. There's all sorts that you can do. But basically when you step through the portal it randomly generates you a new world. Based on those cards that you've laid in. And when you actually find a realm that you like and you want to call it home. You can make it as a respite area and other players can come and join you and help you with your building jaunt which is pretty darn freaking lovely so it's got that multiplayer aspect something i didn't touch on on power world is it will have multiplayer it does have multiplayer servers but at the moment when you want somebody to come into your instance they have to come in with a guest account rather than their own account so it's it's not quite there yet but it is in early access and they are planning to evolve that and even bring PvP into Power World at some point. Anyway, so moving on from Nightingale and moving on from Power World, so that's January and February, January Power World, February Nightingale, moving into March, so this is the whole first quarter of 2024, is Dragon's Dogma 2. Might as well lose the hat now people. Yeah. Anyway, Dragon's Dogma 2 is a fantasy sort of style game. Think Skyrim, but then with almost amazing combat. It is amazing combat. Amazing combat, almost on par with like Devil May Cry type stuff going on, peeps. I would say the combat system in Dragon's Dogma I prefer even over that of Monster Hunter. And Monster Hunter is another game that I'm thoroughly interested in, and that's coming in 2024 as well, the new edition of Monster Hunter. But Dragon's Dogma 2, I played all of Dragon's Dogma 1, I platinumed that game that I liked it so much. I only bother platinum games and getting every trophy in every, in, in every game that I really thoroughly enjoy. No Man's Sky being the main one. But I've also platinumed Dragon's Dogma and that was no easy task. I've got a whole playlist on Dragon's Dogma 1. If you haven't seen it, I'll put a link up there. Go hit up Dragon's Dogma 1, people inside the viewer verse. Freaking awesome. You can buy it as cheap as chips now, peeps. And you know what? It actually holds its test of time. It's a game that was way beyond its years and it got overshadowed by the likes of Skyrim. So if you haven't seen or picked up Dragon's Dogma, pick it up now and hopefully you're going to have completed it by the time Dragon's Dogma 2 launches. Now, Dragon's Dogma 2, you don't have to have played Dragon's Dogma 1 to enjoy Dragon's Dogma 2, because in Dragon's Dogma 2, the antagonist starts off in the world without no memory of previous. But Dragon's Dogma 1's freaking epic, people. And if you've got me on your friends list on the old PlayStation Store and you pick up Dragon's Dogma 1, you might find my character inside of the Rift on PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. Her name is Phoenix. She's a little red demon girl and she's freaking nutter. She's, she's awesome. She'll make your playthrough awesome and fun. Anyway, people, so that's Dragon's Dogma. Oh! IGN are doing IGN firsts all throughout January on Dragon's Dogma 2. They've just done one on the actual player creation module. So you know what, I'm just going to shut up for a moment and play you that IGN first and then I'll be right back. So this was from 12 hours ago, this Dragon's Dogma footage. We're continuing this month's IGN first on Dragon's Dogma 2 with a detailed look at its new robust character creator. The original Dragon's Dogma had a pretty intense character creator, but Dragon's Dogma 2 has upped the ante for just how detailed you can get for your character and ideal pawn. Dragon's Dogma 2 director Hideaki Itsuno explained during IGN's visit to Capcom in Japan that the character creator was something they put a lot of work into for the first game. 
but with better hardware performance this time around, they could add as much freedom to the system as they wanted. Itsuno-san said, The problem is that this means that the act of creating a cool character or the character that you want to see becomes no different from doing so with clay. You could have your ideal character in mind, but you'd basically need to be an artist to form that character with your own hands. So that's where we had to begin when deciding how character creation would work. He thought maybe they should make the character creator simpler, but because the game's artists wanted something that detailed, they worked hard to create a system that gives players access to every available setting if they want it, while also offering a simpler creation method. They accomplished this by having two body types for each race, nine base bodies per type, and an uncountable number of base head variations created from nearly a hundred real human face scans. From there, you can make the final adjustments yourself giving Dragon's Dogma 2 a system where anyone can create attractive, realistic-looking faces without needing to be an artist. The options are indeed vast, and you can get incredibly granular while editing a character if you so choose. There are 40 types of muscle styles and 12 sliders for just a human's nose, for example. Art director Daigo Ikeno admitted, I imagine some people getting themselves stuck in the creator and having trouble starting the game. That said, I think it's a creator that will be able to meet the needs of most people. I'm one of those people who consider a character creator as deep as the one in Dragon's Dogma 2 as the first boss, as I can easily spend more than an hour happily tweaking a character, which I was tempted to do at Capcom Japan despite my limited time hands-on. Of course, the most obvious new addition to the character creator is a brand new race, the Beastron, anthropomorphic big cats Itsunosan wanted to add since the first game, but couldn't due to hardware limitations. Specifically, rendering the fur on many subjects on the screen at once. To make sure the Beast Wren had enough diversity compared to humans, Ikeno-san explained that the team looked at the kinds of patterns and colors found in felines and made sure that the kind of variety the players would surely want were included. Ikeno-san concluded, I hope that players will try changing both Beast Wren and human faces to see what they can make. We have more on Dragon's Dogma 2 as part of January's IGN First coming soon, so keep checking back for more. Thank you for watching and keep it here at IGN. I myself look forward to traveling alongside you and using my experiences beyond the rift to enrich your adventures. There you go, people. I mean, the IGN first of the actual character customization, it looks like it's come on leaps and bounds. I'm going to be stuck in that for ages because my actual main player I'm not so bothered about. Plus, you can also sit in like a barber's shop, or you could in the first one, and change your look and feel whenever you want of your main pawn. But your actual sidekick, your little guy that goes off and people sort of take on side adventures, that's the one that you really want to focus on. Because when they walk out into the rift, there's loads of other people that are walking around in this rift that players can actually choose from. Now yours needs to stand out. So really spend some time on creating your pawn. It's one of my favorite aspects of Dragon's Dogma, the first outing, was the pawn system. Because those pawns, when they get taken by another player off on an adventure, and then when they come back to you the next day, when you log in or whatever, they will come back with a mission knowledge from that other mission they've been on. So if you're walking about in the world, they'll say, Master, over there, there's something of interest, follow me. And you follow them off and they will take you to this new mission that you probably haven't done. And also they come back with a gift that the other player has gifted them to give to you and a rating and sometimes what was called Rift Crystals back then. Hopefully Rift Crystals is still going to be a currency in game that you could spend on cosmetics and and different skins and things like that to sort of personalize either your pawn or your main character. It's an awesome system, greatly underutilized by other gaming companies. And I, wish, I kind of wish Capcom would use it that little bit more in other games that they do, because it really is a gnarly system. It's multiplayer, but not multiplayer. It's great. I kind of love solo edition games. I love running solo games, but then to have that little multiplayer nod as if to say well you've been creative and we've seen you've been creative here's some rewards lovely love that awesome anyway so they're the three games for the first quarter of 2024 that i'm going to be bringing to my channel people which one out of all of those excites you the most in fact i'll do a little graphic right now on the screen that shows my excitement levels for each of these different titles ah I wonder if your excitement levels are the same sort of levels as mine for each of these titles. Yeah, so Power World, the reason my excitement level for Power World isn't as high as what it was initially is after watching people play Power World, it doesn't seem to be a massive game. You know, a lot of people have played like a hundred days in this, but that's game days and they've completed it. 
I've already seen the end boss of this game. I didn't mean to. I accidentally saw it. Uh, but yeah, and I've seen the legendaries and how you go about catching them. To be honest, Power World looks like it's a little bit of a higgledy-piggledy mess that's been stapled together by a small development team, and that's probably a fair sort of observation, because I think that's exactly what it is. And it's in early access right now, it could evolve, it could change, it could get better. And you know what, the Craftopia is another game by the same company, and that has been evolving now for like the last three years or so. But sadly, it's still in early access, and I'm wondering whether Power World is going to follow suit. And then when they get a little bit bored or get a new idea, maybe they might jump ship to their new idea. I just don't think, if Craftopia hasn't made it into being a full game yet, my worries are that Power World will follow suit. Okay, so my excitement levels for Nightingale being quite high there. Um, yeah, I like the procedural elements. I love the idea of sort of building a base and getting a respite zone. The idea of Nightingale, though, is to actually get to a city called Nightingale, okay? And now the city of Nightingale is almost like some sort of Tesla safe haven. It's got all these sort of electric sort of protection fences around it, akin to like, you know, Jurassic Park or something. But it keeps all the bad out and it keeps everybody, all the human race, safe. Now, the whole game title is called Nightingale. Now, I was involved in early access of Nightingale and I thoroughly enjoyed my time in playing inside of Nightingale and it has evolved a great deal and a lot of the feedback that those games testers gave during the whole player development cycle have been listened to and have been implemented. Some of my gripes at the start were around resource gathering where well, they've sped that up immensely and also I said about, I, I, overly, I didn't overly want to put down roots and make a base, that's really not what I'm there for, I'm there to explore and I, I want to just go on jaunts and see what portals I can spin up. It'd be nice if we could put down an easy campsite where they gave us bedrolls, they gave us little mini tents and a little campsite that you can erect just with some basic of resources. If that's the way you want to play, you can just sort of hammer that down. You do need crafting benches though. If you're going into very risque places, you are going to need those crafting benches, you are going to need to craft some decent weapons. There is still the need to put down a respite area but you don't have to build a massive great big complex in every place you go. You can just go back to your respite zone and keep building that out and just use little campsites if that's the way you want to progress. So they've listened, they've taken that on board and I definitely want to jump back in. I was trying to play on Joypad during the actual experience that I had and that's been an evolving process as well. It's been getting better in each and every edition. I can't wait to see what they've done in the February release. Is it a game that I can live stream? I think it is. I might just have to do a lot of resource gathering before I jump on in and then do that live sort of experience. But I can definitely do pre-recorded content for that one. So that one is why my excitement levels are quite high. It's also got that steampunk nod and the visual style to it is in the latest of the Unreal Engine. Again, they actually delayed it to put it into the latest Unreal Engine and trust me, it looks sublime. So I can't wait to jump in there, it's just whether my PC might melt while I'm trying to do recorded footage at the same time. I don't know whether it's going to be up to the task. Well, we'll see how we get on with that. I might have to build a PC in the new year. Well, I say new year, we're in the new year right now. And then my excitement levels for Dragon's Dogma 2, they are through the roof, people. That's the game that I'm really looking forward to, to bringing to my channel and doing something a little bit more special with that and doing a whole playthrough, maybe do a playthrough in easy mode and then go straight into super hard mode because that's the way I did the first one. Yeah, I completely missed normal mode. I'd done the easy mode for the story, then jumped into the hard mode for the freaking challenge. And I did easy mode first, just to get the lay of the land, find out where all the missions are, where all the places of interests are, explore the whole map, and then just go and do the missions in hard mode. And that's pretty much how I did it. That's how I got all the trophies. And that's kind of how I'm feeling I might play again. So anyway, people, that's everything that I've got for you today. I hope one of those free titles has now appeared on your own radar. And I'm hoping you're going to be picking up one of those free games to be playing inside of 2024. Now, I may as well speak a little bit about No Man's Sky. I think we're going to get quite a large update inside of February for No Man's Sky in par with the other February updates. In fact, I'm going to do a separate video on No Man's Sky and all the updates that we've had in Februarys for the last, say, four to five years. Just to sort of show what we've had before and what I think we might have this year. 
Anyway, keep an eye out for that. If that's tickled your toast buds, hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications so you don't miss it. But it should be the next pre-recorded video that I put on my channel. Anyway, people, until next time, goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again.